Okay, so first off, let's start with why you want to change bearings. Um, here's a rotor out of a like an 8312A. And if you look, you do have a couple tiny spots, high spots. But being four, almost 40 years old, it looks pretty good. Now this this copper spot that's right here, that's normal. Since the Mazda rotary engine bearings are a puzzle piece design, basically it's one piece and they roll it and they piece it together. If you can see that, this is the this is the, the rotor side of the bearing. This is gonna be your high spot on inside so like this rotor I just showed you it'll have that copper strip in it that copper strip is right here I don't know how well it's showing up but if you're looking at it you can see the puzzle pieces When you're holding this in hand and actually looking at it, you can actually see the puzzle piece in it. So that's normal. <clears throat> but today, we've got some tools. These ones are well used. We've had them for at least 30 years. So let me show you how to press bearings in, why you might need the tools and uh, help you guys along. Okay, let's start with a front gear. And some of your gears have a set screw. You do need to take this out to get the gear out, or the bearing. In this case, I already pre-loosened it. Some cases you can get away with just a screwdriver. Some cases you need an impact uh, screwdriver. That's all the screw is. And that little that little nub right there, that's what sticks in the bearing side of the bearing. Now when you put this in a vise, make sure your alignment pin here doesn't get pushed in. That's to help set your in-play pieces and help them stay aligned. But here's why we're changing this bearing today. It is obviously... This bearing is okay up until you get to here. And it's... Crashed. So after you guys get your bearing set up for your gear, in this case we'll use the front gear, in a press, slide your your brass slug in. And in my case, I need an extension. Bearings should come out with some kind of force. If it's too easy, then something's wrong with it. I'll explain that here in a little bit. Now that your bearing is out, Look how nice and smooth that is. And this surface here we're looking at. This is where your set screw is. On the other side of that 
is your oil feed hole, your oil feed right there. On some of your newer bearings, that's where this notch comes into play. It'll line, it lines up with your oil feed hole. Now part of the reason why we use a solid br brass slug is one, it holds the bearing all the way down, all the way through, and when you go press this in, it'll help you center it. Now, for those that have, that are new at this, you know, you gotta keep this hole lined up in the gear. What you can use would be a, a, a felt, tem, felt tip pen, marker, pencil, and line those, t line these two up with here. It is a good idea to take a clean rag and wipe out your gear or your rotor before you push the bearing in. Now would also be a good time to check your teeth. And this one, they're just fine. You have your oil feed hole here. Let's take those two notches, line it up. Let's go press it in. If you guys look, this needs to be down just a little bit more on the front gear. If you don't push this in all the way, it will mess up your in play and you'll never be able to put it together. So, we'll keep going. We don't need much more, just a little bit more. There we go. Perfect. And you can see all the way through. That's enough, that's adequate for oil. And we'll lock tight our screw back in. I get this question at least twice a year. If the bearing spins. Yeah, the bearing. Yes, the bearing is bad. This one spun. Your alignment tab that's right here on the bearing should be right about here. Now, the other issue, if I get the light to hit it just right, you can see through that, between the bearing and that rotor. In this case, this rotor, even though you checked all your clearances, they're fine, this rotor's done. What happens now is as, as this spins, it causes a like a honing effect and it basically bores out the rotor or the gear. These are pressed in. It needs to stay in place. What causes bearings to spin is it basically locks up its stuff to the shaft either from no oil pressure, low oil pressure and starts to spin. In the wake of that it's time for a rebuild. Um, I've had, like I said, I've had customers over the years ask me if it's okay 
no. You cannot get another bearing to press back in and stay seated. So, if I'm bursting your guys' bubble on that, sorry. But, here's a good rotor. If you notice, your alignment pin and your notch in the rotor didn't spin. You're good to go. But this bearing, in this case, if you notice, something was drugged through it. It's a bad bearing. So, there is a way to press these in and out using the bigger tool that I've got to make it easier. When you're pressing this out, make sure you have a clear spot all the way around on the bottom. When you're pressing them out, gear face down. Drop your, your tool into place. Just like the gear, we need a, an extension or a spacer. Just like the gear, wipe it out, make sure there's no oil. Also, in case your plates are not flat or there was debris, whatever, sitting on it, but make sure the points you had it sitting on are okay. In this case, I know it is. I won't worry about it. Now, just like the gear, this notch, put two marks on it so you can see all the way down. That notch needs to go right there. The challenge with this is when you're setting it up, you typically can't see straight down. So that's where the two lines come into play. Okay, let's line these two up. These two lines. Now you don't have to, but it makes it easier. I know my dad, for example, he can do this by eyeball and he's dead on with it. Me, on the other hand, I started using, I started using those two little lines And it's made it so much easier. Make sure we're centered a little. This tool will help hold the bearing in. Other than other methods. Or other tools. And same thing with the gear. You do need to be flush or as close to as possible with the rotor. And by putting your hand, one way you could do it is by putting your hand under And you can feel the bearing coming out the other side. And like right. A little more. A little more.
Now that your bearing is pressed and set in, your notch is dead center. And don't forget, now that you're done, to clean off all of your bearing flashing. One last tip, your old bearings. Keep them, put them back on the tools. That way, if something happens, I mean, these are, we've been using these for years, they should wear and tear and a little beat up, but put them back on, and then the tool is protected. Because if something happens to the old bearing, who cares? But it's a tool. Anyway, Thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. I know it's a little long, but I wanted to be thorough. And so yeah, if you guys have any questions, put them in the comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching.